Hi, this is David from over at Cintimaya.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the Bezier Curve tool, convert that to a nerve surface and then finally finish off by creating some useful polygonal geometry as you can see by this wine glass we have in front of us. Now there is, uh, this is going to be a pretty quick one for YouTube, there is a long form version of this on my website, simplymaya.com. If you perhaps are not quite as adventurous with Maya or you need a bit more of a detailed explanation. But you can see here our wine glass does match um, our reference image quite well. So we have an inner and outer portion of our glass, which I'll go over in a little while, but it's important that you don't create a one dimensional plane, uh, that you have an actual solid object, especially if you intend to use this for simulations. So I'm going to jump right in with the Bezier curve tool and I'm just going to start putting points in. What I'm doing is actually clicking and dragging, which as you can see pulls out the Bezier curve handles. These can be used to adjust the Bezier curve la later. Um, you can actually hit control when you adjust these handles. You'll see me do it here. And that breaks the tangentancy of the handles. So you can edit them independently from one another. This allows you, as you can uh, see by the demonstration, to get a curve that's very fast. Now you'll notice that I am not uh, following the line of the stem because it's not symmetrical. And we're going to revolve this geometry so it becomes symmetrical. Now I've pretty much done with my Bezier curve here. I'm quite happy with the shape. So I'm going to convert it to a NURBS curve. It's easier to work with for the next stage of the process. So I'm just going to go Bezier to NURBS and that gives me a NURBS curve. Now I can select the control vertex and scale. Uh, to line up the vertex. So I'm just scaling on Y here to make sure that they are completely flat and that way I have a completely flat top and bottom to my uh, curve. I'm also going to come in here and take this opportunity to select the control vertex point, snap it to the grid and then scale it back into place. I should have done this first but that just allows me to ensure that the top and bottom most points of my curve are in the same place on the vertical plane. So when I revolve around it in a minute um, we won't get any uh, weird artifacting. So that should be about enough. Now I just need to go to revolve under surfaces menu in the hotbox and that will revolve a NURBS um, surface around it. Now as you can see my NURBS surface is black because I model with two-sided lighting turned off. So we need to reverse that direction. Again under surfaces just surface re uh, reverse. It's important that under your uh, shading you have two-sided lighting turned off. Now I'm going to convert this NURBS surface to a polygon, so just NURBS to polygon. And I'm going to use quads and a count of about 400 polys. Again, there's a much more detailed explanation of all this on my website. I'm just looking here for any extraneous artifacting that might have come in from the conversion. And then I'm going to cut the top off this glass because it would be, well, fairly difficult to... Um, to drink out of it if I didn't. Now all I did there was select the faces and hit delete. It really is that easy. Now you see the inside of my glass is black here. That's because it's one uh, one plane at the minute. It doesn't have any solidness to it. So we're going to select all these inner faces and then when you go to the menu and just duplicate these faces to give us an inner and outer portion of our glass. So you should see me here go to uh, uh, edit mesh duplicate faces and that will create a group for two separate objects one the original object and one as you can see here the faces I just duplicated so I'm going to go and set the pivot to that before I scale it and then I'm going to uniformly scale it in Y which will actually scale X and Z and then I'm just going to scale it a little bit in Y so I've got that inner surface to my glass as you can see here on the x-ray view now I'm going to combine these two objects together um, so I'm just going to go mesh combine, but here I've actually made a mistake because you can see my inner surface is black and that's not correct. So I'm going to scale the top and bottom points together and then I'm going to separate the object again because obviously I'm looking at the back side. If the two sided lighting is off and the faces are black, that's the back side. So you'll need to select that object and just go to mesh reverse. So there I've just done a simple bridge operation across the two points and that should give us the shape of our glass. All I need to do now is match it up correctly with the reference. So I'm going to delete the other things in the scene. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start with soft selection, which is B, to uh, move some edges about in this case. 
to get it scaled exactly to my reference. Now the stem I'll have to bend around and I am using the smooth preview view here by the way which is just three on the keyboard with the object selected. So come in, move your vertex around, a little bit of scaling will need to be done. So again I'm just uniformly scaling in Y which is control and then pull on the Y handle which will actually scale in X and Z. A little confusing at first but it makes sense once you get into it. So we are pretty much done with this process at this point. Um, we're probably going to be left with a hole in the bottom of our glass. Uh, and I'm just tidying up the outline here and renaming some things. So when I pass the scene on to somebody else, they know what I've done and what everything is. Uh, always best practice in the industry. So if we look around, we've got a very solid polygonal glass. It's got completely quadded geometry, but it does have a hole in it. See, I can see through the bottom of the glass, and that's going to be inconvenient for keeping your wine in. So I'm going to go and select all of the vertex around that, and then I'm just going to do a merge to center under Edit Mesh. Okay, and that gives us our points. We do have some triangles, but in this kind of geometry, they're very easy to get rid of, simply by selecting every other edge and hitting Delete Edge which will give you back quads. Uh, so there you go, there's a fully quadded glass. Now, as I said, if this was a bit speedy for you, I like to do these YouTube tutorials for people that want to just dive in feet first, feel free to head on over to Simply Maya, where you'll find a full 28 minute version of this. Thanks.